The basic idea behind adversarial machine learning is that it extends machine learning from the situation where one player has one cost function representing their interests and instead deals with more than one player with more than one cost function. On the left, I show you what the cost function looks like in a traditional machine learning algorithm. We have some kind of cost function that takes a player's parameters and describes how well that player performs. A higher cost means worse performance. So this might be something like the negative log likelihood assigned to the labels on a training data set. For example, uh, what is the negative log probability that the model will assign the correct labels to all of the different images in an object recognition data set? This is the way that we train things like classifiers and many different kinds of generative models, and even some kinds of reinforcement learning. On the right, I show you what happens when we start to have more than one player and more than one cost. So a player might be something like a machine learning model, or it might also be a person or a program that is trying to interfere with the operation of a machine learning model. You'll see a lot of concrete examples throughout this talk, but what we can think about easily is the example of spam detection. We have a machine learning model that wants to recognize spam, and we have spammers who want to get their spam through the system. We can model this with the language of game theory and draw a value function, where we're looking for a point called a Nash equilibrium, that is simultaneously a minimum of the defending player's cost and a maximum of the attacker's pl attacking player's cost. So this is, for example, a point where the spammers can't get any more of their spam through the system unless they were somehow able to change the spam detector. And the spam detector is not able to get any more accuracy unless it was somehow or other able to change the spam generation algorithms used by the spammers. Machine learning research today is much more complicated than it was even just five years ago or so. Among people who were working in machine learning for the purpose of developing artificial intelligence, uh, there was really only one goal until about five years ago, and that goal was just to get machine learning working. There were other versions of machine learning in other applications where machine learning really did work, but those applications were usually not what we would consider AI complete. They weren't things like understanding which objects are in an image, or recognizing uh, text from speech. We could attempt those tasks with machine learning, but it wasn't really working yet. And then about five to six years ago, we started to get human level performance on those kinds of advanced perception tasks using deep learning algorithms. And now, rather than having all of the different researchers in machine learning work on making machine learning work, we've branched out into many different areas. I think of it as a little bit like the Cambrian explosion when we saw many different body types of animals appear at the same moment in evolutionary history.